I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Today we're going to talk about web charts and the axis options which are available in the web chart configuration. We've made a number of changes starting with 4.6 update 1 build and wanted to go through and show you what some of these are. The first thing that we'll talk about are trend gaps. And I have an example history set up which will display trend gaps. So this is something that's common. It's been the default behavior uh, since AX as well. And what you'll see is a gap in data between records that are displayed here in the chart view. If I take a look at the history table view, it'll be a little bit more apparent maybe why we're seeing a gap. You can see on certain records there are start trend flags. Now this indicates either the station was just started or that history collection began, perhaps because the history extension was enabled or it entered a collection period if you're not doing 24 hour collection with the history. So the indication in the graph is a visual uh, identification that there may be uh, missing data perhaps because we're not really sure how long that uh, interruption may have been for or whether it was intended. So starting with that 4.6 update build, now on the Axis tab, so click on the Configuration Gear icon, go to the Axis tab, you'll see that there's a Show Start Trend Gaps property. And the default here is Yes, but you can toggle that to No. And when you toggle it to No, now the web chart will connect the dots between those records, even in cases where there's a Start Trend flag, uh, which previously indicated a gap in the data on the chart. We'll get into a, another video uh, which covers how to change some of those default options so that web charts would automatically uh, not show those trend gaps if that's what you want. And I'll show that in another video. Now, another case where you might normally see gaps is uh, associated with certain data values. And I have some uh, simulation data here set up as well. In this case, you're seeing no gaps in the data. This is a change in behavior with that 4.6 update build. So clicking on the gear icon and looking at the Axis tab, we'll see there's also a Show Data Gaps property. And the default on this is actually No, which is a change in behavior. If I change this to Yes, what you'll see is a number of gaps here in the chart. So really there's four gaps showing. This one uh, between these two records, another between these two, a third between those two records, and then a fourth gap here. Taking a look at the History Table view, we can see maybe the reasons behind some of this. Uh, the first gap from the left side is because of a null status. So that's not a valid status. We don't uh, treat that as a valid record and don't connect the dots between the two. There's also an NAN value, not a number. So again, in this case, it's not a valid numerical value that we can plot. Also have an infinite value, so positive infinity or negative infinity. And then the last case is a hidden record. So perhaps there was some erroneous value or some reason why I don't want that record to be displayed in the chart or in a table view, uh, then I can uh, assign a hidden uh, trend flag to that record or possibly modify the value as well. So previously with AX and, and 4.6 release, initial and older, these gaps would be shown in the web charts. But now, again, the default behavior is to not show those data gaps so the web chart has a better uh, UI aesthetic uh, uh, view to it when there's data gaps because of bad data values, bad statuses. Another change is associated with the axis scaling itself. And when you look at web charts, uh, the behavior typically is that the axis will auto scale based on the data point values which are being displayed. And again, with the changes on the axis tab, there is an option here for facets limit mode. And the default setting is off, which retains that original default behavior. However, you can change that to inclusive. And when you change to inclusive, what you'll see is the axis scaling now changed quite dramatically. In this case, it changed to represent the min and max facets on the control point. So if I drill into uh, the BACnet network here uh, to the air handler, and I'll go to the actual control point, which is my room temp. 
what we'll see is that the facets here, uh, min facet is 50 and the max facet is 250. So the chart, when it's in inclusive mode, will look to those min and max facets and use that to scale the chart instead of just auto scaling uh, using the plotted values that are there. Another change though, is that we can now add some additional facet keys here, which are chart min and chart max. So by adding a new facet key, I can select chart min and assign a different value than the point value. So the point min and max might have to do with the valid sensor readings or valid ranges of the value for uh, overriding or setting the value. In this case, the chart min and also a chart max facet are going to be used to configure the minimum and maximum axis values in the chart. So I could set this to perhaps 60 and 90. And now I'll go back and refresh this chart view. So what you'll see here is that when I refresh the view, uh, the, the scale now goes from 90 to 60, which are the chart min and chart max facets I set up. And if I look at the axis tab, I'll see the facets limit mode is off. So if I go to inclusive again, then we'll see that now it goes to the min and max point facets, the, the minus 50 and the 250. So we can toggle uh, between those settings. There's one more facet that we can add, which will affect how that chart displays initially. And that is to add the, the chart limit mode facet. So that should be in the keys as well, chart limit mode, which is a string. And the, the facet value can either be inclusive or locked. So it's just a string. You're typing in either the word inclusive or locked. And what this does is when the chart loads, if it sees that chart limit mode facet, then it will automatically go into that mode, inclusive or locked. So in this case, even though the chart min and max facets are specified, it defaulted the chart to using the uh, um, inclusive mode because it picked up on the facet, even though this is showing uh, off right here now. So that's uh, another way to override that behavior. And we'll get into, again, in another video, how we can change some of that default behavior without having to add all of these facets uh, in, in, uh, to uh, save charts and embed save charts into PX files. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.